Hi, and welcome to Xeno Labs Live, the new live video series from travel booking and expense management provider Circo, where we feature subject matter experts on various topics across the corporate travel industry. I'm Tony DeStalfo, and today I'm joined by industry icon Jim Davidson, the chief product officer at Acelia. Jimmy D, always good to see you, and uh, thanks for joining. Great, great to be here, Tony. Look forward to today. Always, always love being here. We wish we could be in person, but soon. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Right, now, now um, Jimmy, you, we've been friends a long time. You've been at this um, a very long time. I know we both know Andy Menkes. He calls himself the godfather of the CTD. Uh, would it be fair if I called you the godfather of alternative airline distribution? Uh, yeah, you, you can, you can, I'll, I'll take the Godfather title from you anytime. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, well, if, if that's the case, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to speak a little bit like the Godfather has. Okay. Okay. It makes no difference to me uh, how a man makes his living, mind you, but uh, this airline distribution can be a tough business. And you're still here many years later. So two salute to Jim Davis. <laughs> yeah. yeah okay that uh, yeah. that's kind of how i feel you know and and i'm lucky to leave the room with a good set of knees <laughs> <laughs> all right enough, enough screwing around and bad impersonations let's get down to business all right got it um talk me talk to me a little bit about the acquisition it's almost a year i can't believe how fast yeah. it was you, know, you, you guys closed you sell your deal closed in june uh, you were at the altar with Sabre. Uh, we know that that one fell through. But tell us what this brings to um, Acelia and then also to your historical clients. At, yeah, uh, yeah. No, I, look, it's it's uh, it was, you know, I look back and, and you know, it's just amazed of, of what happened. And, you know, the good fight we had with Sabre to to, you know, get this thing closed. And it, and it ultimately didn't didn't work, not because we didn't want it to. That's for sure. Um, but then uh, Excelia and Vista um, quickly came came back at a, at a very difficult time uh, in the industry and, and saw a vision of of where putting Fairlogix and Excelia together uh, would would really create a solution that, that isn't out there in the industry today. And, and I say that in terms of a really the end-to-end -end kind of, of, of solutions. There was no product overlap between Excel and Fairlogix, which is really unusual in most mergers. And uh, and not only did you know that we didn't have overlap, but when you put one and one together, you you actually had a, a higher factor um, because you could make the products that we had uh, better by simply integrating with each other's product. So, for example, our merchandising engine is better because now we can actually settle those those ancillaries and things more quickly and more efficient because of the, of the financial solutions. We can take data from the financial solutions and put them into the the offer creation solution. So, so it, it really what when we you know we, we kind of got our heads up after the deal was closed, we realized from a product point of view. Uh, this was really a, a very good extension uh, to both our sets of customers. And, and so, yeah, I, I am proud and lucky to be uh, where I am as a chief product officer uh, with Excelia. Super. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, the benefits of NDC for corporates, right? There's a business travel um, session here. And a recent Company Dime article, you were quoted as saying it remains a bit of a mystery when compared to the leisure side where we've seen a lot more uptake um, and it's a lot more mature there. So how do we solve the mystery uh, for corporate yeah, travel? That, uh, that's a great question, Tony. And I, and I, and I think I, I was, you know, the mystery is, is kind of identifying the pieces. It's, it's not the proverbial mystery that, you know, uh, we, we have to, we have to figure out what it is to solve it. There's, there's a lot of moving pieces involved in delivering kind of the NDC model through the traditional corporate uh, landscape. And some of that is because of the tools that were in place, um, um, some of the, a lot of the corporate booking tools really mm -hmm. that are in place did, did not have the idea of getting content from multiple sources, for example, number one, and then actually packaging content um, in a way that, that leisure uh, I mean that, that corporates have versus leisure. Leisure, you can you can actually do a, a lot of add-ons, and the, and the customer can can have a lot of discretion 
in, in how they build their, their product. Mm -hmm. In corporate, a lot of it's negotiated, a lot of it's bundled, um, a lot of it is pre-priced. So, so there is some complexity in that. But, but the concept of NDC for corporates, and I, I call it NDC corporate, um, is, is very workable and very real. And you know, content, uh, somebody was asking me the other day is, you know, do corporates really need content? I'm like, <laughs> absolutely, they need content. And, but it's a different content in terms of structure than, than the content is that you, you do leisure. Leisure is uh, much more discretionary where corporate content is much more fixed um, and requires some, you know, some rigid rigidity around how things are bundled uh, because it's not just what the airline might have available. It's what the airline may have available that's consistent with what the corporations uh, have agreed upon. So, so I think it's, it's, it's a mystery in, in, in that sense, but Coming out of COVID, I'm I'm starting to get all kinds of calls from corporate booking tools, and and they understand that content is king, regardless of whether you're a corporate traveler uh, or a leisure traveler. Now you referenced a little bit about the traditional uh, travel ecosystem, specifically you have the GDS and you have the TMC, who are clearly kind of the three uh, tenants with when you stick the OBT yep. in there. Um, so do you think this needs to be? A GDS solution, or do you think the breakthrough will happen when it comes through the traditional players, the traditional, you know, eco e eco ecosystem players? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, look, I, I think COVID has put a lot of pressure on airlines to really look at all their methods of distribution. And, and so honestly, I don't see a lot of change coming out of COVID. I see a lot more partnership type discussions. We've talked about that before, how, how um, it really the players need to get together uh, without disrupting a lot of the, the kind of traditional systems um, until we can get back on our feet. So um, I, think, I think we'll see some pretty good incremental uh, growth in the current ecosystem. Um, and then maybe once we're back, we'll get something a little bit more radical and a little bit more simplified. Uh, but right now, I know our focus from Excelia is to kind of work within the confines of, of the guardrails, per se, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and try to help get this industry back. Uh, less disruption to, to make the disruption happen, right? So exactly. Do it in a less disruptive way. Yeah, uh, that's, that's a good makes, way to put it, Tony. Makes perfect sense. All right. You guys just published a report. Uh, that I was reading through, uh, Celia did the airlines, a path back to profitability. For those of you who haven't seen it, I would suggest you go out and get, there's a lot of good information in there. One of the things I, uh, you called out was the fact that the pandemic has actually it's accelerated digital shopping among consumers. So I'm assuming that's a positive, right? Because people will get more comfortable doing everything digitally. And do you see this as a positive trend, um, you know, f with respect to NDC specifically on the corporate side? Yeah, yeah. A again, I, I think what has really transpired in, 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 in airlines right now is um, a, a clear directive to, to get travel back, which means, you know, regain the loyalty, focus on safety, um, look at destination data. I mean, w one of the things that that I think NDC allows for is the ability for rapid change, that, that you can change how you distribute based on environmental factors. And, and as we know right now, you look at, you look at where, you look at India, you look at some hotspots. I'm here in Michigan today and Michigan is the hotspot. Um, and, and all that impacts travel and, and it impacts travel from day to day. So, so as we look at NDC and the ability to deliver content, I think this is really key for particularly the corporate market in terms of understanding how they have to modify any travel program, you know, not on a second's notice, but but week by week or month by month. So um, I think this 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 um, relationship between airline and corporate and even travel agency um, is is really going to allow folks to get more accurate information more readily uh, into the hands of, of the corporate travelers. So I think that's the value of NDC. It's not the value of NDC just for NDC sake, um, but with NDC, you really get faster access to, to offers and information. I mean, scheduling is all over the place with airlines right now. Um, you wanna be able to react to that. 
the change, the the servicing is critical in in uh, the rebooking and 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 having those capabilities. And and NDC, I just believe, uh, fosters that uh, much quicker than some of our traditional um, distribution methodologies. Okay, so um, last question before we move you into the Xeno zone. But in the same report, uh, you guys said that um, nearly half the airlines that you surveyed suggested that the standards are being developed too slowly by the traditional players. So again, back to those traditional players, there's been a push by certain airlines very aggressively that included pulling content, right? So there's kind of the carrot and the stick and then American came up with a kind of a carrot approach. We'll, we'll kind of incent you to do this. So is this a financial, you know, is the, is the boulder a financial one or is it a technical one or maybe, maybe both? Yeah, you know, I, I always, and, and maybe that's just the skeptic in me, I always look for the financial angle on anything because I think that's that's fundamentally a driver. Um, yeah. So back to your opening comments about uh, the Godfather. Um, look, I, I, I think there's there's certainly a financial element. There's there's a negotiation on on the relationships between how airlines distribute their product through GDSs, and, and that will continue to be a, a factor. But but there and, and and that will solve itself out. But but I do think there's there's and I won't say there's a tech there's a real technical barrier because look everybody we're talking about here is is a technology company. So um, I think you have probably a financial um, um, aspect of it, and just in terms of of trying to figure out how this is going to play out in the marketplace. And then ultimately a, a desire to go full scale on it. This is this is still fairly new, um, and to make that kind of investment that a GDS has to do, although all of them have come out and, and basically, yeah, exactly basically that they're in, and, yeah. and 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 I know that for a fact because we we have a number of airlines that were that that are on that we have the APIs for that are that are being connected to the GDSs. So um, I, I look, I think everybody got knocked down on their knees. Um, but I think the, the, the interest in NDC is a study and, and Henry Hardefel, uh, conducted that sun study. It wasn't, a, it wasn't an in, internal, uh, yeah, yeah. but, but yeah, so I think, I think what came from that study is that everybody sees the value, including all the, all the, the players in terms of the technology, the GDS is, uh, otherwise they wouldn't be investing in it. Um, look, it got to a slow start and, and COVID, um, you know, just kind of brought everything to, to a, a stop. I think, you know, um, we're going to see really accelerated, um, accelerated aspect because particularly when the carpets uh, warm up again, uh, they're going to want this content. They're going to want this ability to change things and support and service things very quickly. Um, NDC will give them that capability, and and all the partners, all the partners will will jump to that. Well, nobody knows this stuff better than you, Jimmy D. Thank you for all of that. Uh, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. I'm going to bring you into the Zeno Zone. This is uh, where we, we 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 try to get a little bit more familiar with uh, with <laughs> with with Jimmy D, the guy. All right, so uh, you ready to jump in the zone? Is, is it going to hurt? No, <laughs> well, it, depends. it depends. It depends. You might hurt some feelings, it, 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 but it depends. So let's let's get started here. All right. Yeah. So this has probably happened to you a lot recently, but let's say you have a major business decision to make, and you can only make one call. That can call can go to anyone uh, in your network. Who gets that call? Well, Tony, you you know the answer to that one. It's you. I mean, the problem. <laughs> oh, the problem is You're in trouble. You don't answer the phone half the time, so uh, you're but, you're in big trouble. You're in yeah, big trouble. Yeah, yeah, and and I will say I've I've had a I've had a dear friend um, and, and mentor in, in my life that I have turned to um, on on very frequent occasions to discuss um, those those kind of of you know one you got one call who are you going to call. Uh, and actually, prior to that, when my dad was living, my dad was one of the most mm -hmm. practical guys in the world. Not highly educated, but practical. I I used him as a sounding board, uh, which was pretty amazing. Very cool. Very cool. All right, all right. Next uh, next question. Three dinner guests. You have three dinner guests, dead or alive, um, from beginning of time till today. Uh, who's at Jim Davidson's table? Yeah, well, you know, the, the, getting live dinner guests is is very hard <laughs> for me. <laughs> So I'm gonna, I'm going to go with a couple of dead ones. <laughs> so, it, 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 well, uh, and 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 so um, 
actually there's they're, they're still living but one is nelson mandela i would love to have dinner with nelson but just just because uh, of what this person has gone through and mm -hmm. and and the stories and guidance they can give um jumping completely to the other way as you know i am i am an mba fan um to the to the hilt i would i would have and a, and a michael jordan fan mm -hmm. um yeah. Ever ever since uh, Carolina, I've been I would have I would have him there. That would be interesting with Nelson, I'm I'm sure. And then um, um, just so it's not all guys, I I have so much respect for Michelle Obama. I would I would bring Michelle Obama into this conversation, and she would humble us all. <laughs> You're probably right. Okay, so now this is a tougher question as a secondary part to this, and given I thought your, there were just two. No, no, I didn't know there were. There's, there's a secondary part. The secondary part is: Are you guys in a are you guys in a dive bar or you fine dining? Oh no no no! Again, first of all, I can't get into fine dining establishments. I'm in a dive bar, Tony. Okay, yeah, but you got. Wait a minute now. You have Michelle Obama. You have I, Michael I'm, Jordan. Michael Jordan and I Nelson Mandela. Come on, <laughs> you're not going to be fine dining with those people together. Maybe individually, but together. Okay. All right, all right, click. all right. I give you that. All right, last question. Uh, actually, it's not a, a question, but it's a prediction. Jimmy, tell us something you believe is going to happen in the next 12 months in our industry. Yeah, well, uh, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I get asked this question a lot. And and it really, uh, leisure travel, in my view, in 12 months from now is going to is gonna far surpass uh, pre-COVID. I think the, the pent nice. up demand, now it may spring back a little bit, but I think we are going to see unprecedented numbers of, of leisure travel within 12 months. I, I think, you know, you know, pending, you know, uh, uh, vaccines and, and kind of getting this thing under control, uh, the, the demand is, is going to be wild. And I think that's going to be a real shot, quote, shot in the arm for the industry. <laughs> yes. Good stuff. Jimmy D, listen, always a pleasure. I want to thank you for joining us today. I also want to thank everybody who's joining us live here on uh, Zeno Labs Live uh, for Jim Davidson and Tony DeStalfo. Uh, we're signing off. To salute, to salute, Jimmy D. <laughs> Great to see you.